Which New York Rangers prospects continue to stand out with the Hartford Wolfpack during the team's current run in the Calder Cup playoffs? We discuss that as well as the Wolfpack's 4-2 loss to the Hershey Bears in Game 2 of the Best of 5 Division Finals. The Pack, of course, now just one loss away from elimination. All this and much, much more on today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 827 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And Locked On New York Rangers is, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And so, yeah, taking a little bit of a detour from the Rangers and uh, turning this into Locked On Wolfpack for at least one day here. You know, I always like to uh, focus in on what's going on with Ranger prospects, whether it's with the Wolfpack or, you know, different prospects playing for different teams in different leagues around the globe here. Uh, I always feel like, you know, I I never get to do it as much as I'd like to, but uh, given the fact that the Rangers season is over and the Wolfpack season is still ongoing, at least for now, uh, as good time as any uh, to do just that, to focus in on the Wolfpack here. And, uh, you know, a little bit of a tough performance tonight for the Wolfpack. Like I said, they lost 4-2 to the Hershey Bears, and they now trail two games to none in the best of five division finals. And for some uh, reference here, it's the third round of the uh, Calder Cup playoffs, but it's also the round of eight. You know, they do a a thing in the AHL where a couple of teams get buys. Uh, The Hartford Wolfpack was not one of those teams. They had to win a best of three just to get into the round of 16. And now uh, they're in the round of eight is the AHL, just like the NHL is right now. Um, But with the AHL, technically it's the third round of the playoffs as opposed to the second round of the playoffs uh, once you get down to eight teams remaining. But regardless, uh, Pack obviously trying to bounce back from what was a really disappointing game one loss. Uh, We talked about that after it happened as well. The Pack in game one, you know, up 2 nothing going into the third period, uh, up 2 to 1 late in the third period. Uh, Hershey pulled its goalie with about two minutes to go. They tie the game and Hershey wins it in overtime. And something that was really a problem for the Wolf Pack in game one. Uh, reared its head probably even to a greater degree here in game two, and that was giving up just way too many odd man rushes. Like I said, in game one, it was something of an issue. It really hurt the Wolfpack in overtime in game one. In the 441 of overtime that was played before you know Hershey obviously won the game in the first game of this series, uh, the Wolfpack gave up three odd man rushes in just that 441 uh, amount of ice time. And uh, that really continued here. It continued right from the opening face-off. There were odd man rushes left and right uh, for the Hershey Bears in this game. It must have been getting close to double digits by the end of this game. I really believe that. I wasn't really keeping track or, you know, counting as it was happening. Maybe I'll do that in game three. Uh, but, yeah, the Packers giving up too many odd man rushes uh, to live to tell about it, basically. And, you know, Dylan Garan made some really nice saves for the Wolfpack. I, I thought he was on top of his game in this one as well, despite the fact that uh, he did give up the four goals. Um, but, you know, Hershey scored an odd man rush early in this game, and they also uh, got the dagger late in this game, about six minutes to go, uh, an odd man rush, a two-on-one for Hershey, and they score on that, and that made the score 4-1 to in favor of Hershey. Uh, the Pack got one back before the game ended, but that was it. They lost 4-2. to And, um, you know, I should also mention the final odd man rush for Hershey, the one that they scored on and made the score 4-1 to in their favor. Uh, it must be said, a linesman got in the way and, and kind of uh, messed with the Wolfpack and uh, prevented them from having their best chance at defending the rush. But regardless, I mean, they were playing with fire all night anyway. They were giving up, like I said, odd man rushes left and right. And uh, they got one there, uh, did did Hershey, and that made it 4-1. to And of course, they went on to the 4-2 to win. But uh, all this leads me into the next thing that I want to talk about here. And we talked about him the last time we discussed uh, the Hartford Wolfpack. And that would be Dylan Garana. I thought, you know, again, despite the fact that he gave up four goals in this game, he was very good once again. Uh, strong game one, strong game two. And uh, thus far, an outstanding playoff run overall for Dylan Garan, who, uh, as I recently mentioned, a former fourth round pick by the New York Rangers back in 2020, still just 20 years old, is Garan. But, you know, the better he does in these playoffs, uh, probably the sooner that he'll make his New York Ranger debut or, you know, the better chance that he'll eventually make his New York Ranger debut. I still think, and I I discussed this recently as well, I still think the Rangers uh, go with a veteran uh, goalie 
as their backup to Igor Shosturkin to start next season. But uh, nothing can be ruled out. The Rangers in the past have not hesitated when it comes to, you know, giving their uh, young players a chance to prove themselves at the NHL level and a little bit of a sink or swim situation. And uh, we, we've seen that with a lot of defensemen for sure, some young forwards. Uh, why not with the backup goalie as well? But, you know, as soon as I say that, it also kind of makes me remind, uh, it gives me a reminder, shall I say, um, that, you know, Dylan Garan, just 20 years old, Rather than sitting on the bench, you know, far more often than not with the Rangers and, you know, maybe uh, playing at a, a league that he's not quite ready for, it probably makes more sense for him to get more seasoning in the AHL, be the Wolfpack starting goalie, be out there pretty much every night that the Wolfpack play, and, uh, you know, continue to, his development in that way. But as far as him being on the Rangers, I would say never say never. Uh, one other thing that I noticed about Garand in Game 1, the, the only critique that I would have of him is that it felt like in Game 1 he was giving up uh, a few too many juicy rebounds, you know, not just giving up rebounds, but giving up some long rebounds. Now, the good news is that anytime he did this and Hershey got a scoring chance, uh, you know, a second chance as the result of those big rebounds, uh, I felt like Grand would always make the save. Uh, but in this game, I thought he cleaned that up a little bit. There weren't nearly as many rebounds, even though he ended up giving giving up more goals. I still thought that he controlled the puck a little bit better in this game. And like I said, did not uh, allow those juicy rebounds that we saw a little bit of in game one. But Garan's been very good. Uh, he's not the issue here as far as uh, why the Wolfpack are now down two games to nothing and, and facing elimination in this series. I thought once again, he had a strong game uh, in this game here tonight. But once again, the Wolfpack now uh, facing elimination. They got to win three in a row to uh, advance to the semifinals. But obviously it all begins with, uh, you know, winning game three, back in Hartford, which actually will not be happening until Wednesday. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. And we got a bunch of other things we got to get into. Also, uh, definitely want to talk about Libor Hayek. You know, obviously, Ranger fans are pretty familiar with him. I thought he had a really rough showing in this game, but uh, some other Wolfpack players I, I thought looked pretty good. Uh, Zach Jones had a decent night. Uh, Lori Pahuniemi, I, I thought, played very well. Will Cooley looked good in this game, and I know a lot of Ranger fans, myself included, very, very excited about Will Cooley and the prospects of him uh, possibly playing with the Rangers next year. I mean, he played a couple of games this year, but maybe he becomes uh, a little bit more of a mainstay with the Blue Shirts uh, as soon as next season, maybe even as soon as opening night. We'll see if he can uh, pull it off and make the team right at training camp. And like I said, we got a lot to get to here, and we'll get to all that good stuff in just a second. But first, we got to let everybody know, Today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Indeed. There is no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform you need to build yours. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. We streamline hiring with powerful tools that find you match candidates. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed Data US. Even better, Indeed's the only job site where you only pay for applications that meet your must-have requirements, Indeed is an unbelievably powerful hiring platform delivering four times more hires than all other job sites combined, according to Talent Nest in 2019. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. All right, so we just want to go ahead and thank everybody, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. And for the everydayers, uh, you definitely want to come back and check out Tuesday's episode because uh, we've already recorded it, actually. It's a uh, episode where we continue our off-season series here, what's become an off-season series, where uh, I'm basically just looking around, scouring the entire NHL landscape and trying to figure out who could be, who should be, who will be the next head coach of the New York Rangers. Uh, we've already covered uh, Chris Knobloch, and we already covered, uh, in, in the same episode, actually, Peter Laviolette and Marc Messier. And in this upcoming episode on Tuesday, which will uh, premiere on Tuesday, um, 
you know, both obviously on audio platforms as well as on YouTube. Uh, the two coaches that we cover are Mike Babcock and Bruce Boudreaux. And I just kind of share my thoughts on both of them. You know, do they make sense? How high will they be on the uh, the Ranger list? The Ranger, um, you know, preferences uh, are they front runners? Are they dark horses? Uh, pretty much the whole nine yards. Everything having to do uh, with Mike Babcock and Bruce Boudreaux, and uh, the possibility of either one of them becoming the next head coach of the New York Rangers. And then on Wednesday's episode, leading toward doing a mailbag. Uh, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. Those are always a blast. You know, I always love hearing from you guys and hearing different perspectives on the New York Rangers. But for right now, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling. Keep focus on the Hartford Wolfpack and uh, what happened in game two here, as well as, you know, which players, which Ranger prospects look good. Uh, one player who I got to say did not look good at all was Libor Hayek. And I'm not trying to pile on. I know Ranger fans over the years have kind of soured on Hayek. I mean, maybe they were really not that high on him to begin with. Obviously, he was part of that ill-fated trade that sent JT Miller and Ryan McDonough to Tampa Bay. I mean, the Rangers basically just didn't get a whole lot of anything out of that. Um, and Libor Hayek was part of that trade. They've tried to make it work with him. He's gotten a couple of different chances spread across a couple of different seasons here, and it just doesn't seem to be happening uh, for Libor Hayek with the Rangers. And frankly, uh, it was not happening for Libor Hayek in this game either. Uh, less than eight minutes into the game, Hayek basically just got schooled on a rush uh, by the Bears into uh, the Wolfpack zone. He did not look good at all in this. And granted, a couple of his teammates didn't look so good either. A lot of just reaching for the puck and not taking the body and just making it way too easy for the Bears to get to the Wolfpack net, right to the front of the Wolfpack net on a rush into the zone. There it is again, you know, the, the rushes that I was talking about. And in this case, it wasn't even an odd man rush. It was just a rush into the zone. If anything, Hartford had the numbers. This was like a two on three or a two on four rush into the zone. And it didn't matter. They got past the Wolfpack anyway. But man, Hayek, I mean, he just kind of like reached out with his arms to try to slow the guy down and uh, it just didn't work. The guy the guy got right by him, and uh, goal was scored. And at that point, Hershey was up 2-1 to one in the game, and they were on top for good. Uh, so not a great play by Hayek there either. Uh, he also took a penalty not too long after this. Uh, it was a play in which he lost his stick, ends up taking a penalty. Was probably lucky was Hayek that uh, he didn't get called for a second penalty later in this game. There was one that definitely could have been called. And then there was this play that was just weird. And it kind of led to another goal for Hershey that made the score three to one in their favor. Uh, so Pack have the puck in the uh, Pack have the puck. That's a little bit of a tongue twister. Uh, let's let's go with Hartford has the puck in the attacking zone there. Um, and you know the puck comes back to Libor Hack. He's at the blue line, and he brings his stick back. And you think that you know he's just gonna unleash a one timer. And I'm not sure if he was faking shooting here or if he was actually going to shoot and then uh, decided not to at the last second. But regardless of, you know, what his mindset here was and whatever he was trying to do, he brought his stick back, you know, once again, looking for the slap shot, looking for the one-timer. And in so doing, he allowed the puck to exit the zone. It just went over the blue line and he never stopped it. And he didn't have anyone anywhere near him. Uh, just a situation where there was no reason for this puck to come out of the net. Now, the good news for Hayek is that he was still able to pick up the puck, but now he's got a bear, you know, breathing down his neck, and Hayek retreats all the way back into the Wolfpack zone. I mean, he almost went behind uh, the Wolfpack net there. Uh, the puck eventually comes back out in the neutral zone, but uh, then Hershey brings it back in, and they end up scoring. So, I mean, the miscue by Hayek, it didn't lead immediately to a goal, but this was the same shift here. Libor Hayek was on the ice, and when the goal was scored, uh, he had once again lost his stick for the second time in the game. So, like I said, this is a really, really rough showing for Libor Hayek, and Again, I'm not trying to pile on. I'm not trying to, you know, take aim at somebody who's kind of become a little bit of an easy target for Ranger fans. But I just got to call it like I see it. Lee, Lee Borhack really had a rough game here. And as far as, you know, the sixth defenseman next year, I, I feel like going into every season, that's always one of the training camp battles for the Rangers. Is, you know, who's going to be the sixth defenseman? Uh, I, I guess, you know, Lee Borhack, his name can be in the hat. He should be allowed to compete for it just like everybody else. But he's not my he's not my top pick. That That's for sure. Um, you know, you've got guys like uh, Zach Jones, you know, maybe give him another chance. Uh, maybe somebody like Matthew Robertson, who's actually injured for the Hartford Wolfpack right now. Uh, Ty Emerson has been playing with Zach Jones as the top pairing for the Wolfpack in this series. So maybe his name is in the mix as well. He's he's the defenseman that came over in the Patrick Nemeth to Arizona trade. Uh, ben Harper is still around. He's still under contract for another two seasons. Maybe he gets a shot at it. Like I said, Libor Hayek. He's had his chances with the Rangers. He's now played in 110 games in the regular season with them. And I, I think at this point, I'm just ready for the Rangers to, to kind of look elsewhere. And it's nothing against Libor Hayek. Doesn't seem like a bad guy or anything like that. But between what he's shown for the Rangers, 
Um, you know, in the 110 games that he's played with them, and this performance that I saw now at the AHL where he was really struggling, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just ready for somebody else to, to take the reins as a sixth defenseman at the start of next season, and hopefully well into the season as well. Uh, we're going to keep everything rolling, though. It wasn't all bad for the Wolfpack in this game. I mean, there were some players that, that stood out, and, you know, I want to talk a little bit about the Wolfpack top power play unit, and specifically Zach Jones, because I think... Um, you know, he, he does a good job there. He seems to see the ice very well, seems to be very poised as the quarterback of the power play. But I have to wonder, you know, even if Zach Jones does make the Rangers next year, does he have a chance of really playing on the man advantage for the Rangers? I'm not so sure that he does. It's not really through any fault of his own. But yeah, like I said, let's go ahead and we'll get into greater detail about that in just a second. Uh, but first, got to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Bilt Bar. Looking for a delicious snack but don't want all the sugar and the calories? Then you need the best tasting protein bar ever built. You got to try this. If you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices but you don't want to compromise on taste, then I've got just the thing for you. What makes Built Bars so good? For starters, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and cookies and cream. I'm not sure how Bill does it, but these bars... Tastes like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And now you don't need to wait to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering Built Bars at Built.com, but now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club while you can still get your specialty flavors at Built.com. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puff. If you're close to a Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with our hip flavors, brownie batter puff, and churro puff. You can thank us later. All right, so let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here. Like I said, I want to mention uh, the Wolfpack top power play unit. They scored a power play goal in this game. Uh, specifically, Will Cooley scored a power play goal in this game, which was his first of the playoffs. Uh, more on that in just a second. But as far as the Pack top power play unit for anybody who might be wondering about this. It's basically uh, most of the players. I mean, they, they have more than just these four players, but there are four players on the top power play unit um, that played for the Rangers at one time or another this season. And as I just mentioned, there's there's other players uh, on the Wolf Pack that played for the Rangers here. But as far as this top power play unit, you've got Zach Jones, Johnny Brodzinski, uh, Ryan Carpenter, Will Cooley, and then the only person who did not play for the Rangers this season, and that would be Tanner Fritz. Um, but you know, Zach Jones, he's out there. He acts as the, the quarterback on the power play and he does a good job with it. You know, I, I think he sees the ice pretty well. I think he's pretty poised, confident and relaxed in that role, you know, moving the puck around, being kind of the facilitator of the man advantage. And I thought he looked good in this game as well. Um, but you know, I have to wonder with Zach Jones, and it's kind of a similar situation that we saw with Nils Lundqvist because, you know, Lundqvist and the Rangers gave him a chance. He didn't really do so good. They end up trading him to the Dallas Stars. And the biggest thing that Nils Lundqvist brings to the table is offense from the blue line. And part of that is the ability to quarterback a power play. Uh, Lundqvist was never really going to get that chance on the Rangers. And I'm not so sure that Jones is either. And it's not because it's through no fault of either player. But when you look at the way the Rangers are built right now, you look at the top power play in it. I get the feeling this guy named Adam Fox, you know, he's, he's not so bad at hockey. He's going to be out there. He's going to be the quarterback of the top power play unit for the New York Rangers. And... They're almost always, I think, I mean, unless the new coach shakes things up and does things differently, but I think they're always going to go with Fox and then four forwards. So it's not like you're going to have, you know, a Ranger top power play unit where there's two defensemen out there. So that takes Jones pretty much out of the running as far as the top unit is concerned. And the second unit, uh, we've seen Jacob Truba there. Uh, they were going with him in the playoffs this year. We've seen Ke'Andre Miller uh, get some time in the second power play unit as well. So I'm just wondering, you know, is Zach Jones going to get a chance ever, really, on the, on the Ranger power play unit. Um, I, I guess you could maybe try to go with uh, a second unit of, you know, Jones could be the lone defenseman out there if you want to roll the dice and give him a chance. Or you can go with two defensemen. You go Truba and Jones on the second power play unit. That's an option as well. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it just kind of feels like Jones might be a little bit back in the pecking order. And again, that's through no fault of his own. It's just the fact that the Rangers have, you know, some defensemen that bring some offensive skills, some guys that have been there and done that as far as getting time on the power play units. 
And uh, again, I'm just not so sure that Jones, it's really in the cards for him. If he even makes the Rangers, which he has to do that first, uh, for him to be out there for a ton of time on the power play. So I'll be very curious to see how that shakes out. First of all, whoever wins the, the sixth and final defenseman spot uh, going into the season, but then also uh, if it's Jones, does he get a chance on the power play? Uh, something else that I have to mention as far as, you know, how this series has unfolded and one of the biggest reasons why Hartford is now down 2-0 to and on the brink of elimination, uh, they threw five and three quarters periods of, of the six periods that have been played in this series so far had a grand total of zero even strength goals. Uh, they only had three goals in total and all three of them occurred on the power play. It's interesting because the first two rounds of the playoffs, uh, the Wolfpack won both of those series, obviously, and they did so despite not really doing a whole lot in the power play. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure the announcer said uh, that they had only scored two power play goals in the first two series combined. Obviously, they won those series anyway, but now they seem to have fixed the power play. They've scored three power play goals in the first two games here, but uh, they're not scoring even strength. Now, they ended up eventually getting uh, an even strength goal late in this game. Uh, Less than five minutes remaining, you had Clendenning uh, taking a shot through traffic. Uh, you know, Anton Bleed was screening and, and jumping in front of the net, and, uh, you know, Clendenning was able to score, and that cut the lead to 4-2, to but there was only 4.51 left in the game, and uh, that was indeed the final score as well. And uh, that's the only even strength goal that the Wolfpack have uh, through two games so far in the series, and that's obviously something that's going to have to change if Hartford's going to have any chance of uh, winning this series or, you know, for the time being, let's just go with uh, just winning a game here, winning game three, which is what they will have to do uh, to keep their season alive. All their goals are coming on the power play. They're living and dying on the main advantage. And what team does that remind you of? I I think you guys can probably figure that one out uh, pretty easily uh, on your own there. Um, What else do we want to get to here? So uh, I thought Tanner Fritz had a pretty strong night. You know, he was skating hard. Uh, There was an instance where made a great move along the boards, made a centering pass. Uh, The shot was taken. The save was made. Uh, I also want to talk a little bit about Will Cooley. I mentioned this a second ago. I thought he had a strong game for Hartford. Uh, He scored on the power play for the Wolfpack. You had Henriksen drawing uh, a penalty in which he was in the defensive zone. Um, So a bad penalty there by Hershey, but a good job by Henriksen drawing the penalty for the Hartford Wolfpack. And at this point, the pack really needed it. This was in the first period. They were down one to nothing. They were being outshot 10 to three to this point in the game. Um, And then, you know, you get a face off that's one to Fritz. Fritz passes behind the net from along the boards, behind the net to Carpenter. Carpenter with a really quick pass out in front to Will Cooley, and Cooley buries it from the doorstep. That was actually Will Cooley's first goal of Hartford's playoff run here after he led the team with 25 goals in the regular season. So, uh, you know, it's true in the NHL. It's true in the AHL as well. Uh, If you want to win these games, these big-time playoff games, you need your best players to be your best players. And, uh, you know, Cooley... You know, they've kind of won a little bit in spite of him if you just look at the total points that he had in the first two rounds combined. But uh, obviously a big goal here for the time being and get the game tied. And again, if if the pack is going to get back into this series, then I think Will Cooley probably going to need to get it going uh, a little bit going forward as well. Uh, You also had a situation here where, you know, Cooley almost set up Brodzinski for a goal a little bit later in this game. Uh, made a really nice centering pass. The save was made, or it might have just gone wide. Uh, I'm not sure if the goalie deflected it or not, but either way, you know, the puck obviously stayed out. Uh, something that I noticed about Will Cooley, you know, in addition to the goal that he scored, he seems to be very, very good. And he's a big kid. Very, very good at maintaining possession of the puck in the offensive zone. There were a couple of times where, uh, you know, he was along the boards in the corner. He's skating this way. He's skating that way. He's stopping on a dime and just shielding the puck and doing a nice job, you know, keeping the play alive. Hopefully that's something that he can do at the NHL level as well. Um, and we'll see. You know, obviously, once again, he had a cup of coffee with uh, with the Rangers this season. Uh, obviously didn't stick around for too long. But, you know, something that I'll keep an open mind with when it comes to Will Cooley and also Brian Offman, you know, I'll toss him into this as well. Uh, if they make the Rangers out of training camp next year, or even if not, even if they just you know end up ma- making their NHL debut with the Rangers a little bit later in the season, uh, I am open to the idea with those two more so than other you know highly drafted players. I am open to the idea of them starting on the fourth line. I know some fans aren't going to like the sound of that. Uh, the reason being though, they're both big you know strong physical kids. This isn't a situation like with, with Capo Caco and Alexi Lafreniere where, um, you know, they're obviously very skilled and, you know, Caco went number two overall, Lafreniere went number one overall the following season. Um, you don't ever want them on the fourth line. And we saw them on the fourth line at times with David Quinn, every once in a blue moon with Gerard Gallant as well. But for the most part, uh, they kept them off of the fourth line. 
Um, with Cooley and Offman, though, I don't really mind it because they're both strong and both physical. And, you know, they get in there on the four check, they go to work. You know, they're grinders in addition to being uh, skilled players as well. So I think they both have a skill set. Um, the little that I've seen of both of them, you know, watching them in the World Juniors, watching them uh, with Hartford, whatever it might be, you know, watching highlights and what have you. Um, you know, they can play on the fourth line and I wouldn't want them to be there for too long. You know, I think naturally, very gradually, you let them work their way up the lineup and work their way into more prominent roles. Obviously, uh, they both have to make the Rangers or work their way onto the Ranger roster at a certain point before we can even really have that conversation. But, um, yeah, unlike a couple of other young forwards with the Rangers, I, I don't hate the idea of, you know, Cooley or Othman, uh, when they do make the Rangers, if, if they want to start them on the fourth line and bring them along gradually. Uh, I, I don't think that's a bad idea at all. By that same token, if they have a lot of confidence in them and they, they call one of them up and they want to throw them right out there, you know, onto the second line, the, the third line, whatever it might be, uh, that's fine too. Uh, the one issue that there is though, is they're both left wingers and my God, the Rangers just have a, a total imbalance as far as left wing and right wing. If the Rangers in the first round this year, take another left wing, I'm going to lose my mind. I, like, <laughs> I get that you want to take the best player available, but my God, I mean, you're at the point now, you've got Kreider, you've got Panarin, you've got Lafreniere, um, you've now got Will Cooley coming along, you've now got uh, Brandon Offman coming along. So it just gets to a point where it's like, I'm not sure what you want to do with all these left wingers. Like, where are you going to put them? And I know, you know, some of them might be able to move from the left side to the right side, but, uh, you know, still, that that's, you know, that that's, it's kind of overkill at this point if you take another left winger in the first round uh, this season. Uh, so that's pretty much it for today. Like I said, we wanted to turn this into locked on Hartford Wolfpack at least for a day here. Game three, as I mentioned earlier, not going to be happening until Wednesday night. So we will discuss that in Thursday's episode of Locked On New York Rangers. And you know, we'll see how far the Hartford Wolfpack can take this thing. Like I said, they got to win a game uh, to keep their season alive. So one step at a time here, hopefully going back to Hartford, you know, the crowd will be behind them and give them a little bit of a boost and hopefully they can keep everything rolling here. But uh, that will do it for today, guys. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. And definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that's at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time.